looking how bright that sun is shining right along that road. It's very hard to see. It's blinding me. On the way to Kalgoorlie. Okay, well, we're just coming into um, Kulgadi. Golden Quest Discovery Trail with Elm. to the information bay and actually take a bit of stock here. I've got a flapping um, flapping piece of webbing from my tent. And then I'll get my bearings and we'll go into Kalgoorlie. Well, I just filled up at the BP <laughs> and the testy bitch behind the counter kept yelling over the um, loudspeaker for me to turn my mobile phone off. Number six, will you turn your mobile phone off? And I <laughs> give it a thumbs up. Goodness me. All I was doing was filling in my data for my tank fill app. And I mean, crikey. It's not like I'm going to set the thing on fire, am I? No wonder they call me grumpy. There's the Woolworths. I'm like, we're in the oversized country now. All these big vehicles with stuff on them, as you can see. And I didn't have much place to pull off there, did I? <laughs> Mining. Time for a cup of coffee, methinks. Let's find some shade. Look at that. Yay! Made to order. The only four. Right. Oh, it's time to take that um, jumper off, I think. You always seem to be fiddling when you're doing this. I had to um, put this extra 10 litres of water that I just bought at Woolies up on the roof rack because I'm really carrying an awful lot of weight here. Um, I've got 60 litres of fuel in the back, plus another 10, 20 litres of water, plus that 12 pack of 600 mil. God knows, I can't remember, 12, 6 is a... 72 so there's another seven kilos so i thought well <laughs> let's even the load out a little bit and put some up there when i get to the next camp i may actually look at rearranging some of this the water i need for when i get further away from civilization obviously right now that we've fixed the water up let's hit the track jack i can hear my springs Or is it the tent? I don't know. It's two days out. You sort of um, you hear all these noises. After I'm out here a week or two, I won't even hear them. 
anyway that's it had coffee had a sandwich now head on towards um, Ford Run I'm um, zipping along here at two and a half thousand revs and my speedo is reading 110 kilometers per hour which is this I oh, sorry 105 110 is the speed limit as you see from that sign and I can feel an appreciable difference in this vehicle from the last trip and I'm just contemplating why I believe it's this I took that great big huge spoiler thing off and obviously with this tent which is more streamlined I seem to be getting touch wood a lot better economy I, the first fill up I was averaging from Albany up to um, Meriden through all those back roads I made uh, 8.53 kilometers per litre carrying all this weight and the last fill up there in Kalgoorlie it was 7.93 kilometers per litre so I think I'm actually improving on my consumption my fuel consumption which is really really good What I am going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of um, duct tape on those two chips just to keep them clean. First we'll get a cloth. Yeah. It always pays to be prepared. Oh, there it is there. <laughs> so there's my little repair kit. <laughs> okay. There he goes. Crikey, I'm doing 103 as well. <laughs> oh, here we are, arriving back in the little hamlet of Menzies. Yes, as I said before, we'll do the railway crossing. Town Hall, I believe. Yes, it says Town Hall on the um, sign at the top of the clock tower. You probably can't see it, I'm too far away. Let's go and have a look in here. All this old agricultural machinery.
Ah, oh, look at the old trucks. Hey, who said you needed four wheel drive? Have a look at that. Road roller. <laughs> I hope this is showing up. War kibbles. It is an interesting engine, a three cylinder one. Can you make for that? Yeah. Look at that. on his motorbike with his child in tow. Probably a bit too dark in here. To see everything. An old grader. Gee whiz. <laughs> That's a ripper. Have a look at that. Let's come around the other side. Maybe we'll get it. I don't know where the driver sat. Oh, back here, of course. <laughs> but there's no seat on it. <laughs> what a ripper. All this old stuff. That's how they used to make roads and farm and do the mining here. Now, apparently, this town ordered a clock in 1905. And it was coming out on a ship called the Orizaba from Italy. But the ship ran aground and sank. And they didn't get a clock until 1999. So there's been a lot of controversy over that particular clock. Because apparently the residents of Menzies, or Mingus, which was established I believe in 1896, couldn't tell the time, it just depended on whose watch was looked at at any given time. So they decided they needed a town hall clock. But as I say, the one they ordered from Italy sank, probably off Fremantle. Salvage experts, go find it. Well it's 103 to Leonora and 400 to Willuna from Menzies. And my last journey back to Albany three months and now three days, four days ago, I did it from Leonora all the way to Albany, which was 970 kilometres, and I'm certainly not going to do that again. But it's interesting, actually. <laughs> I'm glad I stopped there. The times I've come through, and you never stop, because you're always in a hurry. I'm always in a hurry, and this trip, I'm trying to actually slow down a bit so that I can take in what is actually out here. Even though I've been up and down so many times, you always learn something. And that was really interesting to find out about the clock. I like the story about the clock. Of course, people may be wondering, how come it took them so long to get a clock from 1905 to 1999 and the rumor is that it was due to overzealous politicians who didn't want to spend the money on a clock for a town whose population was declining so there you go you see politicians aren't necessarily out for the good of the community they're more out for themselves. Oh, let's save some money and then we can give ourselves a pay increase. That's the truck that passed me earlier. He must have stopped for lunch. I should confess, I have the air conditioner on because this cabin is very, very warm with that sun shining down on it. So there goes my fuel consumption again. <laughs> I don't care. I've been doing a little um, survey as I've been driving along this road. 
number of caravans that are coming towards me and I'm wondering, well, where are they all from? And the great majority of them are either from New South Wales or Queensland. And my question is, hang on, they've been locked down. And how are these people getting across here? Have they done their two week quarantine? I don't know. But I did read an interesting fact the other day, and that was the area of Western Australia is 2.57 million square kilometres. It comprises 33% of the Australian land mass. That's one third. So it's probably no wonder that all of these other people from the eastern states want to get across here because they know it's quite safe. But are they breaking quarantine rules? I don't know because it's a very hard border to police. And the strange thing is, is that where we're going, paths will go to Leonora and then from um, Leonora you can head out towards Laverton and you can do the Outback Way, which I did a few years ago and put videos up on YouTube. And there are basically no checks across that particular road. And I'm just being a bit suspicious because I am a suspicious person by nature, wondering if these people are sneaking across and bringing that damn Delta thing with them. Food for thought. Well, I have a strong sense of deja vu because I think I actually had lunch here three and a half, maybe four months ago on the way up. And here I am again, doing the same old trip, same old, same old. This is the um, Kukaini 24 hour rest stop, although there's no facilities here apart from these tables and there's a couple more over there in the rubbish bins. And um, I was looking, I'm using, this is my Bible, the Camps 11. I did have a previous version, which was Camps 6. And the other version had solid covers. This has this flexible cover on it, which is really, really annoying. And I can't, you know, I used to be able to flip the pages over. Now it blows in the wind. For a hundred dollars, I think they could have just kept with the old pasteboard covers and stopped a lot of people's frustration. I bet there's a lot of people out there saying the same thing. But anyway, it's a great book and um, it certainly helps. And I'm not adv ad advertising it. I'm just letting people know that's how I get around using that particular book. Right, we're leaving Kukaini rest area, heading now towards the Ford Run rest area. Ooh, a bit of water there. Okay. Well, that probably took all of, what, 15 minutes, I guess. I don't know, it's hard to tell with the time lapse. It didn't take very long. Um, back here at Ford Run again, but I'm in a different spot from my normal spot, which is over that way somewhere. I came a lot further in this time, and I was careful enough to try and get it so that I would have enough shade and shelter depending on which way the wind might blow. So we'll do a little bit of a tour 
and then I'm going to sit down and finish the rest of this Carlton Zero beer. Not advertising, but non-alcoholic. Right, well the road is way over in that direction and it follows the line of or the trees on the other side of those ones there and this is where I am it's sort of like a there's a little gully here behind the car and obviously that's where water runs so this is the setup um, both awnings out now as you see and I had to clear the tree and I also have this little solar blanket thing which is charging my two battery packs they're actually not too bad I use them to charge my GoPro batteries and my camera batteries but anyway that's pretty good that'll do me for the night um, and we'll see how we go hopefully I'll get a better sleep tonight okay well I've um just prepared myself a little black fella's fire. Oh, probably not allowed to say that anymore because it upsets certain people. But anyway, it's a little fire that I will have a set of light to later and I can sit by firelight. Won't that be nice? Kay did make me a damper mix, but to be quite honest with you right now, I really don't feel hungry at all. So we'll see later whether I want to actually do it or not. Well, this campsite has got everything except a pool. Got a few flies, but I keep pinching myself thinking, how lucky am I when half the country is still in lockdown and I'm sitting out here? Unbelievable. I am so lucky. Cheers, folks. Well, I did say earlier that I wasn't that hungry, so tonight I'm cheating and I'm just having a bit of sausage and some hash browns on some bread because I'm quite tired. So I don't think I'll even have an egg because I've had some eggs today that I boiled this morning and that'll do, I think. And then I'm just going to get that little campfire going and just sit and contemplate for a while. Well, this is one of the few places that I've ever actually had a campfire. I've just set it going. This this uh, timber that is there's heaps of it around here, but as you can see, it's as dry as a stick, proverbially, and um, it's really roaring. But it'll it'll die down, and this is going to be very nice. I'm just going to sit here and relax and watch the fire. Well, I've awoken to a um, a bit of an overcasty sort of a day, but it's pleasant, and I'm midway through packing up, taking it very easy this morning. We're going to end up at Waluna, and then I've got to check a road out that goes across towards Coomarina or Coomarina, and um, I'll decide when I get to Waluna, I might check out and see what the conditions are like. But here we are. I'm in the midst of packing up. Just boiling the kettle at the moment. Right, well, it's um, 10 to 8 and we've just finished clearing our, breaking our camp up. Now we're going to head towards Linster and then on to Willuna. Well, at least I'm not driving into the sun this morning. It's very pleasant. As I say, it's just turned 8 o'clock. I've just put my rubbish in the bin and um, we'll be in Linster very shortly. I think I'll fuel up there get up to Waluna and then I've got about a 200 uh, kilometre drive across what they call the Waluna North Road but I'll better check it out before I decide to actually go that way in case it's been bogged or closed or something. Apparently this is a historic site, the Station Creek Old Town site. So let's have a look. Did I come in here once before? I think I may have. Creek town site. Oh yeah, look at that. There's steel kangaroos here.
a bit buggy to me.
do believe this is the area where the spreading pom-pom tree is located. Remember that tree for those of you who watched the last series of videos? When I pulled your leg, it doesn't actually exist. So we'll go in here and we'll have a cup of coffee. Yes, this is definitely the spreading pom-pom tree campsite. There's the very tree. <laughs> oh dear, such a naughty boy I am. Let's go to this one here. Ah, oh, very nice, very nice, very nice. Okay. Right, I'll get my coffee. I um, hope you weren't taken in last video <laughs> when I mentioned this spreading pom-pom tree. That was a complete work of fiction. And I found out later when I googled it, there is such a thing as a pom-pom tree. But it's not indigenous to this area. So, apologies. I was just being a little bit sarcastic and frivolous. But here we are. We're back, and I'm going to have a cup of coffee, a couple of boiled eggs, and some muesli bars. We'll put that there so that it doesn't roll. Well, hopefully, these eggs are boiled because I boiled them yesterday. Plastic bags. A necessary evil these days. Okay. Yep. It certainly looks boiled. Anyway, you don't want to see me do this. This is boring. I'll just turn this off for a tick. Well, this is a very good um, little camp spot. It's actually Lake Way Rest Area. And it's number um, 370, camp number 370 on that book, Camps 11, that I was showing you yesterday. It also has Wi-Fi, because I've just been able to pick up the Main Roads um, website, which gives me all of the road closures and road hazards and things in WA, the whole of WA. So that's very good. One thing... However, that I am really disappointed in is HEMA Maps. Now I had issues with this thing last time and this is what I'm getting now. No map. I can actually run a track but I can't see where I'm going. And I had this thing with HEMA. They did a, uh, an update some time ago apparently. Lots of people who were using this thing previously had no issues with it, now have gone away from it in droves. And I'm not surprised. And in actual fact, I did get an email back from somebody at HEMA Maps offering me a free subscription and I told them to shove it because after I read all the reviews, I wasn't going to get their latest app, which couldn't do... Um, tracking as you were driving along like this used to be able to do and now it doesn't so there is one out they say um, it's called Explorer Oz I didn't get it but I and, and I don't know whether I'm going to need it I've still got my two uh, GPS machines sitting in there the Garmin and the Navman and they're doing the job perfectly and I do have all these paper maps so hey let's get back to the old technology this is a load of crap. Okay, we're um, back in Waluna. We've um, managed to stretch our range out to 555 kilometres, which is really good. I'm impressed. Now we're just going to go to the um, fuel station, which I, is the actual post office, I believe. I was here 
three months ago, four months ago. Oh, it's down here, that's right. Around the corner, I think. Town centre. I just passed it, that's the one I was after actually. It is the post office. I, I came in from the other way last time, so we'll do a Yui.